So I wasn't going to say anything about this, or at least I wasn't going to do a video about this topic because I have addressed it in a number of tweets online. I've been tweeting about it really for two days. This really controversial thing has, has snowballed, and I, I, like I said, I wasn't going to say anything, particularly out of respect for the person who is unfortunately at the center of this, the Depp supporter, and I'm not going to name her, but she's at the center of this. I think that I think that she, uh, you know, I, I would assume that she would like for this to die down, especially since she's not commented on it today. But then I noticed that the uh, mainstream media. Uh, was not going to miss this opportunity to um, was not going to miss this opportunity to castigate Johnny Depp supporters, and so there was a major article on a major news site that was released this afternoon. Uh, it was posted just a couple of hours ago, and I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to draw attention to it. But it's one of the usual suspects when we're talking about the <laughs> shitty coverage that the Johnny Depp uh, trial and outcome uh, and, and our social media treatment of Amber Heard uh, has gotten in the mainstream media. This is one of the usual suspects in terms of the, the journalists who have been writing this, this anti-Depp crap, right? And so the thrust of, the, of, this, of this, the thesis of this article is that this particular Depp supporter and, and online social media journalist uh, doxed a member of, or an employee of Amber Heard's PR company by suggesting publicly on Twitter, by asking or suggesting, however you want to put it, publicly on Twitter that, um, that this woman seemed, uh, looked very similar to the avatar, to the uh, Twitter avatar of this account uh, and, and in his account that goes by the name of Camilla, and if you've been following either the um, Johnny Depp or Marilyn Manson cases, particularly post-trial, particularly over the last uh, several weeks, you probably, if you've been on Twitter following it or even on Instagram, uh, you've probably seen some of Camilla's tweets. So um, she has tweeted, as a number of people have pointed out, whoever is running that account, uh, and I'll just say she, since that's what she goes by, um, but whoever's running that account has tweeted to, and Marilyn Manson Uncanceled was talking about this in one of his posts, has tweeted to a degree that's like way beyond what any other, any other public figures that I know of are tweeting. Um, and uh, more than I tweet, certainly way more than I tweet, certainly way more than Marilyn, Ma than um, the, um, that umbrella guy tweets, so, uh, way, way, way more than anybody I know tweets. And that in and of itself is not conclusive of anything. But then when you look at the number, and, and I, I'm not the first to say this, others have demonstrated this far better than I, but I'm just giving us some background here. When you look at the number of likes and retweets that some of these posts by this Camilla account have gotten particularly, and some of you have probably seen this, particularly the threads that she's done, the prominent threads that she's uh, done on Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, in which uh, she's tried to um, promote the idea that Johnny Depp actually was guilty and Amber Heard was innocent and that we've all been scammed. And then another thread on the Marilyn Manson and Emma Rachel Wood situation. And so, for instance, you know, you've got these threads that are getting within, you know, within a short period of time, are getting over 100,000 likes. And I don't think that people understand who haven't maybe been following the social media output as related to the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial and, and situation, like, like I have and like a number of you have, you know, who have been following this now for, well, for me, it's been several years and probably for a number of you too. I know I'm on Twitter every day, and I have been for a long time, and so are you. And so we know, and we, and we follow Twitter very closely through all of these stages, particularly through the trial. And we know um, what is a logical or reasonable um, uh, like and retweet ratio. And uh, particularly for pro-Amber uh, material, which it's just up until very recently any posts that were pro Amber got almost no attention at all, almost no, you know, retweets. And I understand that the trial did raise people's awareness and there were a lot of people who came on board with the trial and to, to watch the trial and stuff. I, I get that. And so you had some of these blue check marks coming on board that maybe that weren't aware before. There were lots of people caught off guard, right? I understand that. But I'm just saying 
when you look even at the end of the trial, and, and there are people who've done much more forensic analyses than I'm doing here. I'm just summarizing. It's the end of the day. I don't look great. I'm tired, you know, whatever. And I just, but I just wanted, and I didn't expect to do a video, but I just, I just wanted to get this out because here's the thing. Here, look, here's my problem before I get back to analyzing the situation. My problem is that like the Eminem song, the old Eminem song, uh, since birth, I've been cursed with this, uh, with this urge. How does he put it? Since birth, I've been cursed with this urge to whatever. And he says, I have this like compulsion to, in his case, rap. Well, in my case, the compulsion is that I feel compelled to tell the truth or to at least to at least give you know my version of the truth is that we're all you know subjectively trapped in our own you know minds and perspectives but i have a perspective on what i think the truth is and what i think is going on with some of this stuff and i just i just cannot be silent when i see that um that someone who for whatever flaws she has uh, you know and, and she and i have had our issues but someone who has really done an excellent job of covering the Johnny Depp situation. I'm talking about this internet journalist now who's, uh, who's catching so much shit from, from you know, news outlets and from Amber Heard supporters and stuff. This person was there from early on when uh, almost no one else was and um, was a great news source and one of the few true news sources during the, for the Johnny Depp situation in the years leading up to the trial and during the trial. And this person has always asked questions. And so this is just one of a number of other questions that this person asked, which is to say, hey, look, we have this, this website, I'm sorry, we have this Twitter page that seems to now suddenly, now that the trial is over and Amber Heard is doing this publicity spree to try to get, you know, salvage her reputation, and then suddenly we have, we have the, these uh, pro-Amber Heard post from this this account this Camilla account that are now suddenly out of nowhere and now the trial is over and interest is waning overall and you can see that like if you look at you know like my YouTube channel I look at my the the um, the views that I get and stuff and they have decreased significantly from the trial and I'm not complaining like I knew that would happen <laughs> we all knew that would happen right but I'm just saying that, you know, interest is waning and yet suddenly out of nowhere you have this Camilla account that has, that seems to have, you know, hit the gold mine with some of these tweets where, where she's getting uh, on her, with some of these anti, uh, these pro Amber Heard and pro Evan Rachel Wood tweets, she's getting over 100,000 likes and like tons of retweets and stuff. I mean, even someone as, and he said this himself, even someone as prolific and popular as that umbrella guy. Or you think of like Popcorn Planet or some of these other outlets that have genuine organic popularity. They're, they, don't, they don't do that kind of traffic. Their posts do not get that number of likes. Like the most popular, you know, post that I've seen that Umbrella Guy do with all of the huge support that he has. Um, you know, maybe a tweet gets into the, the, the ten, uh, you know, like the, uh, over 10,000, maybe 20,000. Very, very unusual that even. You know, most of them will just get a few thousand at most. I know that I know that people on the on the Amber Heard side would say that this is some kind of like sour grapes or something. But that's really because you've got this this site that's getting that's gotten a lot of publicity and has gotten a lot of likes and retweets for some of its posts. But that's really not what it is because I, I actually think, and I've said this before many times, and I think we all know this, that when it comes to the PR game, when it comes to who's winning in the public mind and who's winning on social media, I don't care how much uh, Amber Heard or anyone else is paying to distort appearances or is paying for uh, fake likes or, or whatever. I'm sorry, public opinion and the general opinion, it is, it's not on Amber Heard's side. And I think we just all know that any, especially post-trial, when interest is waning, that for an Amber Heard, a pro-Amber Heard thread to get over 100,000 likes and retweets and stuff, it's, it's just, it's very, it's very clear that there's something non-organic that's been going on with that Camilla account. When you look at the, the crazy number of tweets, again, there are other sources for this, other places to look, and this is for, uh, not a forensic analysis. But what happened is, is that uh, this particular person that I'm talking about, this internet journalist, she pointed out the fact 
that there is an extremely strong resemblance between the uh, avatar used by this Camilla account and a woman that was uh, brought on in the spring to Shane Communications uh, to head up their diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff. Um, and so Shane Communications, they are the extremely aggressive, you, you could say notorious PR firm that was um, hired by Amber Heard sometime in, uh, we were told, I think, in, it was supposed to be in May, but I don't, I don't actually know when Amber Heard hired them. You know, they could have been working her, for her for much longer than that. But at some point, Amber Heard hired them because uh, she wanted someone really, apparently, a really aggressive firm. And so anyway, so this, so they have this woman that they had brought on who's working for them, heading up their diversity and equity inclusion stuff. She was a black woman. And the photo of Camilla is a black woman. And so there are these accusations that for, for someone to draw an equivalency there, it was automatically uh, racism. And I, under, I, I, I understand that perspective, how someone could have in general that perspective if they didn't actually see the photos. But I'm sorry, you take color out of the equation and you're still left with something that looks like an excellent caricature of a real person. And I, you know, I'm not going to spend more time talking about it because I guess it's a matter of opinion, but to me and to a lot of other people, there was an extremely clear resemblance. And it wasn't just that, it wasn't just the resemblance, it was the fact that you, we have identified this account, Camilla, as obviously being, doing something artificial, being somehow linked to Amber Heard's PR. You know, someone has got to be paying for this site to get this kind of promotion. Not only was this Twitter page getting, having all of this activity that seems just really out of the ordinary, both in terms of their output and, and also in particular, as I said, in terms of the amount of attention and likes and retweets they were getting. But also what's interesting here is that this, this Twitter uh, page, it has gotten over the last several weeks, it has gotten a ton of media coverage. It is unusual, as a number of you know, for Twi mere Twitter pages to get mainstream, to get a lot of mainstream media coverage. I've gotten a little bit uh, because I posted exclusive pictures of Marilyn Manson and Lindsay, his wife Lindsay, a couple of times, okay? And so I got, I got, you know, included briefly in some articles or I had, I've had a couple of articles where they've, you know, been like attacking me for my pro-Manson coverage in the wake of the Depp trial. So uh, occasionally, but this, but, but this Camilla site, particularly one of its threads, got so much uh, glowing media attention and all of these articles written about it. It, it had almost the feel of something it, that at the time it kind of came out of nowhere, caught us by surprise, and had the feel, it had the feel of something kind of coordinated. And, you know, and I'm not saying that to be like conspiratorial per se or like, ooh, it's, you know, I don't want to sound paranoid. What I'm saying is, look, I, I am very familiar with these PR agencies. You can do your research, and you can you can see. But these these crisis and uh, community uh, these crisis communication firms, um, especially you know like the really aggressive ones, like the one that Amber Heard hired. What are they there to do? Well, they're there to be very aggressive for one thing about social media. And so, you know, it seemed very clear you have this site this, uh, that comes out of nowhere, suddenly is racked up an impossible amount of views and likes, and also seems to be getting all of this inordinate media attention and these write-ups from, from people. It, it, you know, what do you think these communications firms do? They actually, and I know this for a fact, they actually have contacts when, so like when Amber Heard hires Shane, you know, what's his name? Shane Communications. They have contacts in the media care, that they've cultivated and they will feed them stories. And it's not like them, they, pay, they don't pay them to, to write the stories. And of course, the media people are not obligated to run the stories. But what happens is if it's a story that's in line with that particular person's interest or it's something that they think could be kind of cool or it's in line with their political agenda, then they'll, they'll do a story on it. They'll run with it. And so what, yeah, what I think happens here is that you had all kinds of efforts being made by Amber Heard's uh, PR team to give this Camilla site a big boost. Now, the question is, um, 
was the person who was actually tweeting? Was that person actually working for, you know, Shane Communications? Could that person have, have been this woman who very much resembles this avatar? The fact that this woman uh, at, at Amber Hearts Communications uh, company, the fact that her specialty is diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to me in some ways that actually would make it more likely that uh, she would be the one doing these tweets because, as you know, the main argument that Amber Heard supporters are making is that she's the victim of misogyny, deeply ingrained misogyny. Well, you know, gender and gender issues are one of the primary things that someone who has a specialty in diversity and equity and inclusion, because I'm very familiar with these DEI initiatives and this kind of DEI specialty and this DEI uh, stuff, because it's really big in academia. All right. In fact, like a lot of things, it hits academia before it then goes into the corporate world. Uh, that's why like, people like me who have been in academia, we saw a lot of this stuff, the, some of this, this, the, the things that people are complaining about now with like, you know, uh, gender politics and Me Too and all that. We saw it, it coming, right? And, and feminism and infantilization of women and so forth. Anyway... Um, what I'm saying is that uh, it, it, to me, it's not, um, it, it's not a stretch and it, it's certainly not racist for someone, for an internet journalist who's been covering, who's been covering the situation of this, this Camilla page that is, clearly, that is clearly linked in some way to Amber Heard's PR team. It's not strange to say that maybe this woman who does their DEI work and who looks a hell of a lot like that avatar might be her. Now, I understand that um, there, you know, there's this issue of doxing, okay? And this, to me, you know, is a, is a bit of a thornier issue. I can, I, can, I can see where the other perspective is on this, but, but here's the thing. Um, this woman, I'm choosing not to say her name because I don't want people to think that that's the thrust of what I'm trying to do, right, is doxing. That's the, that's the point. Uh, but this woman, um, she... She joined Amber Heard's PR company. So by very nature of the fact that it is a PR company that is advertising the fact that it is representing Amber Heard, everyone knows that it's representing Amber Heard, David Shane was there in court with her, okay, it's not a secret, it's being promoted. And this woman is joining this PR company to be one of their one of their PR people, right? And so the very binary, very nature of that, you know, I would, it's, it's public. It's all public. And in fact, it, this is all public information about not only that she works for this PR company, but that this PR company represents Amber Heard. So to my mind, there was no doxing because all that this internet journalist did is just draw more people's attention to the fact that this woman who it had already been announced that works for Amber Heard, guess what? She works for Amber Heard. I just don't see the big revelation there. There wasn't. She was making public something that had already been made public and emphasized, you know, in a lot of ways. And so, you know, I, people were saying, and, you know, and I had people doxing me online today and posting my name and uh, where, where I have worked off and on. And guess what, you know, news flashed, you know, I've already, I've already put my name out there on numerous occasions, okay? You go back and you look at some of my early videos, you can see it's in there. I've, I've made reference to it before. I even posted it a couple of times because I'm not hiding from it. Okay. And I recognize that when you make yourself a kind of a, a public figure and you get into a controversial um, arena, then those things can come. But look, here's where there's a bit of a difference. Okay. I have not advert, it has not been publicly advertised that I am working for Johnny Depp's PR team because guess what? I'm not. But let's say that I joined Donny, Johnny Depp's PR team. And it was publicly announced as it was, and it's public information that I'm on his PR team. Would I think that it was doxing if an Amber Heard supporter drew attention to the fact, hey, look, here's someone who works for Johnny Depp's PR team? I, I don't think it would be weird. I don't think it would be, I don't, and I don't think it would be offensive. 
And, you know, when this woman also complains about her family being harassed, I have to wonder what that means because I have been, my name has been out there. It is, my name has been exposed, but not only by myself, but repeatedly and very publicly by um, anti Manson pages. So there are a ton of people out there who hate my guts, either from my perspective on Depp or on Manson, who hate my guts and who know exactly who I am. And do you want to know how many, um, how, how much contact anyone has made with my family or how many, uh, how much harassment my family has gotten or even how many messages they've gotten? Zero. I've been doing this for almost two years and zero. Okay. So I'm not saying that it is not impossible or unthinkable that, uh, this woman's family might've gotten some kind of negative attention, like maybe a, a, maybe a, a DM or two, there's just no way that there's been some kind of like real though harassment or anything. This I, I just know from my own experience because I'm super hated by so many people <laughs> and my name is known. And it's been put out there particularly among the people who hate me and I've gotten nothing. So I'm dubious about that. And whenever people start throwing up, you know, accusations of things like racism or sexism or misogyny or harassment or whatever, and these same people are playing the, the, the big baller, high-powered, high-stakes LA PR game where you get paid $500 an hour to work your magic. You're telling me, you're telling me that you're quaking in your boots because someone connected you to a Twitter account. See, to me, I, I, I don't know. I have not done enough research to say whether i believe that this account is actually this woman's. I do totally believe though that this account is, um, is connected to, uh, Amber Heard's PR. Um, and I'm not even saying that there's anything, you know, wrong with that. Like, I'm not even saying that Twitter should ban the account. I'm not on the war path. I'm just defending this particular internet journalist right to ask this question. And I'm, and I am very bothered by the fact that asking that question has now been blown up and is now being used as yet more fodder and more ammunition by some of the mainstream media against Johnny Depp supporters. And that, by the way, is not my fault and it is not the fault of this particular internet journalist, okay? Other people's, we are not responsible for other people's willful distortions and misinterpretations. And I have to say, that, and this just goes, this is just in general, okay, that I, we have to keep in mind, everyone, look, I know that we all, me included, we all get sick of the misinformation and the distortions and all of that from the other side. But we do have to remember that the reason why they are freaking out so much about all of these different things on a daily basis now, the reason why they're freaking out so much and the reason why the mainstream media won't let this go and, and keeps this alive with all these articles is because they know that they lost. And I don't just mean the trial. They know that they lost in the public arena and no amount of trying to like paper over that or restructure reality or counting up how many celebrities have somehow unliked Johnny Depp's post. I mean, give me a break. How do you advertise to the world that you truly have no life or that you have truly gone off the deep end and you're trying to assess whether Johnny Depp's post has lost like a handful of celebrity likes. Come on, give me a break. That's how desperate they are to show something. But the truth is there's not been a loss in support. People still understand the same thing that they understood either before the trial or by the time it was done. And that is just not going to change. So we have to remember everyone. And I know that it is hard to remember, but as people have said before, Twitter is not the real world, and we probably all spend too much time there, okay? We are getting a distorted perspective, uh, myself included, a distorted perspective of where people are on this. Perception has not changed. Uh, I don't care how many times Insider Magazine uh, or Cat Ten Barge or anyone else would have you believe differently. Public perception has not changed. We still won. Depp still won. So there's that, okay? 
Now, I hope to move on to other things I fully expect to. In fact, I have an interview with Stevie J. Raw coming up. I think it's awesome. I have uh, some philosophy videos for you. I have an expose about academia, the history of academia, and some of these changes that we've seen in journalism that I think you'll find really interesting. That's going to be a long one. As always, uh, if you want to support my work, please like, subscribe, hit me up on PayPal, Patreon. I'll be putting up new Patreon material now as well. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, and yeah. Chin up. Bye-bye.